In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D chocolate chip cookie from beginning to end. We're going to be using Blender 2.8 in this case for modeling, sculpting, UV unwrapping, and rendering. We're going to be using a free program called Instant Meshes for Retopology. We're going to be going over that. And then finally, we're going to be using Substance Painter for texturing. If you do not want to use Substance, of course, you can use Blender for texturing. So let's actually get into this. We're going to try to do this all in one take. So A to select everything, keyboard shortcut up here, X, delete. We're going to hit Control S for save. I already have a folder for this, and then we're going to call this chocolate chip cookie dot blend. And we're going to be doing a whole lot of saving, so make sure you're used to that. So first of all, let's make the cookie dough part of the cookie. So Shift A, mesh, and then cylinder. This is going to make a cylinder. And then we're going to open up the properties and make this thing have more segments and let be kind of the height of a cookie. Something like that. We're going to go into edit mode, go to edge selection, that's two. Alt click for this loop, shift alt click for this loop. Then what we want to do is bevel this so it's more of a rounded cookie. Control B and then scroll up. There we go, that's already starting to look more like the right shape. Go back into object mode, and then what we want to do is notice that these faces are not uniformly distributed. So here we have small faces, and then up here we have one giant and gone. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to modifier, and then add a remesh. It's looking horrible, but we can fix this. On the mode, go to smooth, and then just up your resolution. And each time it's going to add more faces. So here we have around 26,000. And I'm going to settle for around 100,000 faces. Click apply. And I'm going to call this thing uh, cookie base. So now when we go into edit mode, you see that we have a lot of faces and that they're distributed well. And this is going to be useful for sculpting. So now what we want to do is sculpt this object. So control tab and then go down to sculpt mode and go to the sculpting tab. Um, F is going to be your brush size, and then Shift F for the strength. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by smoothing the rim here. So S for smooth, you can just click it here, make that a bit smaller. And let's actually begin smoothing the rim of this. Like that. Okay, there we go. What we want to do is we want to make this thing look like it's made out of cookie dough, and that means it's going to be very blobby and it's going to have cracks everywhere. Um, cookie dough, once you make it into the shape of a cookie, kind of looks like a blobby rock is how I would describe it. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using either the inflate or the blob tool. I'm going to go for the blob tool. I'm going to click front faces only, so when we do this it's only going to affect the top and not the bottom. And you see symmetry is enabled here, as you can see. So I'm going to go to symmetry. And I'm going to disable symmetry. And then I think we're good. We're going to start by adding some volume to the rim here. I'm going to make that a bit bigger and a bit stronger. And this isn't really an exact science. Whatever you think a cookie looks like or whatever you're going for, pretty much sculpt that. S for smooth. We're going to smooth over our blob. Then go back to blob and add some, I'm going to turn this down a bit. I'm going to add some detail in the middle. Just so it looks really deformed and blobby. Like this, and then S for smooth. Okay, I'm going to go to the top view. And hit the grab tool, that's G. Or you can do this right here. And then I'm just going to move parts of this cookie, make that a lot bigger. I'm just going to deform parts of this cookie so it's not a perfect circle. So this is just giving it a different silhouette, something like that. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is um, instead of building up this mesh, I'm going to cut into it. So first let me smooth this area. I'm going to cut into it. So blob tool, set this to subtract, and now you notice it's cutting into our mesh. So I'm going to cut into this very thick part of the cookie, make it look less insane, like that, and then smooth over everything. 
So you can either do this um, do a stroke and then smooth, or you can uh, turn up auto smooth, which is going to be an option when you use the blob. So you can turn up auto smooth. I'm just going to do smoothing. I like to have the control. Okay, go back to blob, beat up your mesh. Again, not an exact science, at least not the way I'm doing it. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to go back to our grab and deform this. Whoops. I'm going to deform it a little more just so it has more of the feel of what I'm going for. Okay, one final smoothing. And then when we go to edit mode, you can see that it was good that we bumped up the density since we have a lot of um, kind of topology to work with here. We need to have all these bumps and etc. Okay, so that's looking good. Now what we want to do is add the cracks to this model. So to do this, we're going to be using an alpha. So go to draw or whatever brush, texture, and then add a new texture. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it cracks. Go to texture, and then we're going to open. In my desktop, I actually have an alpha. If you want the same alpha I'm using, it's going to be available in the description for free. So I have this alpha. It's a PSD Photoshop file. And then you see when we draw, we actually get um, these cracks. That's looking horrible. So we need to do a couple things. First of all, um, back to this. I'm going to go to stroke and change this from space to anchored like this. So now we can pull and it does that. Um, we need to set this to subtract. So it's cutting in and we need to do front faces only. And then you see we're getting these cracks. And again, this is way too intense, but a chocolate chip cookie does kind of look like a blobby rock. So um, don't be surprised that we're going to be putting cracks here. So strength, bring this down to that. Um, I'm going to shift this over. Basically, keep redoing this until you have the look that you want. Okay, perfect. We can smooth over this just a bit. Smooth uh, like that, just so it doesn't look as pixelated or intense. Okay, like that. And then we're going to go back to our draw tool, which should still have our texture, I believe. Yes. And then we're just going to make a bunch of smaller pieces with uh, less strength. And then one final smoothing. Okay, so now we have, actually, let me do a bit more. Okay, I think I'm happy with this as our base mesh. Very kind of cookie looking. We're going to go back to layout, and now we have our cookie base. Okay, so now what we want to do is add chocolate chips along the surface, and then we also want this cookie to actually look like it's wrapping around the chocolate chips, like the dough baked around it. So first of all, let's make a chocolate chip. So that is going to be Shift A, and we're going to add a cube. Whoops, we're going to move this over like that. And then we're going to make it smaller later. Don't worry about that. Modifier, subsurf. Bring this up. And now we're going to turn this into something that kind of looks like a melted chocolate chip. So not like a, a Hershey Kiss looking thing, but more of a melted, um, baked looking chocolate chip. So we're going to go to edit mode, face, scale this down, add a loop cut. That's control R. Bring that down. Then we can actually take our face and bring it down like that. We're going to do an inset and bring that up just a bit. Okay, I like that. Then we're going to select all these and move them a bit to the side. Not too much. Okay, I like the look of that. And let's bring that down just a bit more. So that's mm, actually, let's take the whole mesh and scale it down too. So that's kind of what a melted chocolate chip might look like. It doesn't have that curly tip I was talking about. And let's see, can we settle for less? Mm, I'm going to stick with this level of subdivisions. I'm going to click apply and do shade smooth. Whoops. And I'm going to call this our chip. And let's hit save since we did a lot of progress. Okay, so this is our chocolate chip. 
Uh, before we make a bunch of copies of this and distribute it over, we want to make sure that we unwrap it so we don't have to unwrap every single one after we distributed it. So go to this, go to UV editing. I'm going to hide the cookie base. Okay, and you see our unwrap is horrible as is, so we're going to add a custom one. So edge selection, I'm going to add a loop here, and then I'm also going to add a cut. Shift click and then control for the shortest path. Something like that, maybe up to here. And then spacebar, mark seam. Or you can just go to, I think, UV and then mark seam. And then we're going to select all our faces, U, unwrap. And it's not that important how good this unwrap is, especially since this chocolate's going to be mainly a single color. But we can check the distortion. So let's see, angle distortion is fairly low. What about area? We should probably have a bit more. Yeah, we have a good amount of distortion along the rim. Again, I don't find this that important for this part of the mesh. Okay. So that is fine. Let's go back to layout. And now we have our unwrapped chocolate chip. So I'm going to save again, open this up. So now what we want to do is distribute this chip along the surface of the cookie. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our cookie. We are going to add kind of a weight map of where we want these chips. So we're going to go to object data. I think that's what this is called. Go to vertex groups and add one. We're going to be calling this a chip map and then just uh, bring object mode over to weight paint. And you see everything is blue. That's a strength or I guess a weight of zero. And then when we paint over this, you see we're adding some heat to this area. Um, pretty sure it's the same keyboard shortcuts. Let's see F. Yes, F and then shift F. So I'm going to be adding a bit of heat here. And again, this is saying, where do I want my chocolate chips? So let me turn that down a bit. I'm going to add some to basically the whole top of the surface. And we can always edit this later. So this is the general area where we want our chips. And then I'm going to go over it again for where we want um, more chips. So I'm going to bring up the strength and say like around here we want a lot of chips, around here, along here. And then we can even go another layer and then it really wants them there and really wants them there. Okay, so once you're happy with this, back to object mode, to object mode. And then what we're going to do is add a particle system to the surface of this. So go to, is this, go to particles, add a new one, and then we're going to set this to hair. You're going to see a whole bunch of hair, and this is going to represent where our chocolate chips are going to be. So first of all, we only want them along our weight map, so not on the bottom here. I'm going to enable advanced, go to vertex groups, add a density to our chip map, and then you see the hairs are pretty much where we defined more in the yellowish areas. So we want to change this from hairs to uh, chocolate chips. To do that, go to render, object, and then select your object like this, and it's our chip. And then you see we actually have chips. So a couple things we need to fix. Bring this down to like the number of chips you want. So something like 20, 25, like that. Okay, perfect. And now you see another issue is that they're all rotated. Couple ways to fix this. You can either enable rotation and change this to, I think, object X. Yeah, like that. That's uh, one solution. Another solution, I'm gonna bring this back. Another solution is you're gonna click your chocolate chip. And again, it pins it by the origin. We're gonna go into edit mode, select all of these faces and then bring them up. Let's move this to the side view. Yeah, like that. And then we wanna rotate along, I'm not sure which axis, I think the X axis, by 90, or I guess negative 90. Whoops, let me redo that. You want to rotate it by negative 90. And that's looking more correct. Okay, now what we want to do is scale these down so they're the right size. Something like that. Okay, so now let's actually edit where these chips are. So a couple of things to fix. We're going to go to our cookie particle system. 
Um, first of all, we want to add some variation. So for scale, we have our scale. You can add some variation like this, and you see some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, etc. So I'm going to add some variation, maybe 0 0.1, 10%. And then I'm going to do one more thing here. You see it's not very centered. So we're going to bring these down like that. Okay. Okay, so now what we want to do is pick where we want these chips to be. And what I like to do is just keep changing the seed until you have what you like. So it's very procedural. And eventually, I mean, we can always fix this uh, overlapping. So it's going to be using our weight map with some randomness to pick a bunch of distributions. And then you just want to find one that you like. And you don't want to settle because you can just keep generating new ones. And I think I'm going to dip this down to 20, so we have a bit less. I don't like the look of that. We'll eventually find one. Hopefully we'll find one soon for the sake of this tutorial. Come on, give me, give me a good uh, something that looks very cookie-ish. And if you're not getting anything you like, you can always go back to your weight map and then just fix it so you can... It updates live, as you can see. So if I want like a lot of cookies along here and along here, I'm just going to update this. And then bring this back to object mode. And now our seeds should look more like what I'm looking for. Yeah, these are already looking better. Okay, I think I, think I can settle for this. So let's say that we actually like this. Yeah, let's say that we actually like this. We can do some final touches, like more variation, like 0.2. And then we can add some rotation variation as well. Oh, we need to set this to a different axis. Should be object Z. Yeah. And we can add a bit of variation, as you can see. So I'm going to add 0.15, 15% variation. OK, so let's say we like that. Then what we want to do is we want to go to modifiers. And then, again, make sure that you want this. I'm going to click Save, just in case. Make sure that you want it, and then this is basically bake it in. So I'm going to click Convert. And you see we get a whole bunch of objects here, each one being a chocolate chip. So I'm going to take our original and delete it. OK, and now we can actually delete the ones we don't want or move them. So you can just like select the chip and move it. So first of all, this one is very in the wrong spot. So I'm going to move it up here, bring it down, rotate it. And you can do a lot of these fixes by hand. These ones are way too close. So your seed can get you 90% of the way there, and then you can just do some final touches. And don't worry if they're poking out a bit too much. We're going to make the cookie kind of wrap around these chips in a minute. Uh, I don't need this one. I'm going to delete it. Move this there. There. I want this one more in the center but down more and rotated. And you can spend a long time getting the exact right look, but I think this is looking more reasonably like a chocolate chip cookie. So now that you have all your chips, we can do one final edit. We can hide this, select all these, Alt-H. Oh, actually, let's not do that. We can fix this later. Okay, so make sure you like that. Okay, so I'm going to take this uh, cookie, hide it, I'm going to select all these objects and then shift click to really select one of them and then spacebar join. And then now we have one chip object. So I'm going to call these our chips S for multiple and then unhide this. And then what we can do, what I was going to do is move all of them together down or up. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. I'm going to save it. And now what we want to do is we want to have this cookie wrap around these chips. So you take it, you go back to Sculpt Mode, Control Tab, Sculpt Mode, Sculpting Tab. And now you see what we can do, now that we actually know where the chips are going to be, is we can kind of inflate. Whoops, not going to use that brush, going to use the blob. We can inflate with Add the area around them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring this down. And this is going to probably take a bit, depending on how good you want it to look. And you can kind of go around it. And by the way, if you feel like you don't have enough um, 
faces once you start doing these specialized areas, like you see that. What you can do is you can enable dyno topo, or di I don't know how you pronounce this. Dynamic topology is what it's supposed to be. Enable that. And what this does is we can just keep building on an area. Let's make that more apparent. And it's probably going to slow down your computer a bit because it's doing a lot more calculations, especially for me since I'm recording. I'm going to bring the strength up. So it's basically going to keep adding geometry so we never stretch this too thin. But we can increase the resolution to like 5. So the smaller the pixels, the more geometry in the area. Yeah, and you see we're really getting a lot of detail there. And we can do that and then smooth it. Now, again, this part is probably going to take a while, and it's a bit taxing on my computer, considering that I'm also recording. But I'll do a couple of these, and then I'll probably just fast forward. So go to Blob Tool, bring the strength to this, and then you just want to wrap it around. So it kind of looks like it's more integrated with the cookie. And this is a good tip, so it doesn't just look like you put a particle system of chocolate chips around it, which is what we did. But we want to trick people and think that we did some kind of more sophisticated uh, generation of the chips. So I'm going to do this over here. This one has a big overhang. And you basically want to do this process in a way that you think a chocolate chip cookie might actually look like. You can always look up a reference. And then I'm going to take these areas and I'm going to smooth them. Yeah, this is really, really killing my computer. Let's add some strength on the smooth. And I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure dynamic topology is also being applied to our smoothing, which is why that's taking a while too. Okay, so let me just do one or two more and then I'm going to fast forward. Again, you wrap around your chip all the way around, or part of the way around, depending on what you want. And then you can just smooth it out. So at this point, I'm going to fast forward. Okay, so at this point, I'm pretty happy with the results. This looks a lot more integrated with the cookie, so these chips don't just kind of look random and put on there. Um, however, this dynamic topology has actually added a good bit of uh, geometry, right? Like we have a lot more faces. This poly count has gone up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Layout, okay, and we see everything's updated. I'm going to click Save, and this is where retopology comes in. So again, we have way too many faces, and we want to bring, bring them down. So we have our cookie base, which I'm now going to rename into Cookie High Res because it has a lot of um, polygons. And now we're going to retopologize it so we get a lower version. So I'm going to Save again, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to export this high res. So we're going to select it, File export and then obj. I'm going to save it in the same folder and then I'm just going to call it base high res and then make sure you do selection only so we only export the cookie and then that's good to go. Now this export is probably going to take uh, a bit of time because there's so many polygons and this is one of the reasons that you want um, less polygons. Okay so that's good. Now let's actually exit out of full screen and then open instant meshes. So again, this is a free program. You can get it on the GitHub repository. It's in the description. Link's in the description. Okay, so you open this up. You click Open Mesh and then Open. And then we saved it to an OBJ very specifically because that's one of the only formats that this accepts. It doesn't accept FBX. So I'm going to open this and then let that load in. It's probably going to take just a moment. And then to navigate this, left mouse click is Rotate. Um, right mouse is translate and then scroll is zoom in. And you see we didn't actually export our chips like we intended, right? We didn't want them here. So we have all these kind of like empty cavities. So now what we want to do is retopologize this. I'm going to set this algorithm to default. I'm going to set our target uh, vertex count. That's how many faces we want in the low poly version. So initially somewhere around 300,000. I'm going to see if we can actually dip it to like 6. Something like that. And then we're going to click solve on our orientation field. And then this is going to be pretty much the edge flow of our low res um, 
low res mesh. And we can always edit this, open your comb tool, say, oh, I want the edge flow to kind of go along the rim here, like that. It's going to consider that and recalculate. And you can spend a lot of time doing this, but I think it's probably fine as is. Then we're going to click solve on the position field. Okay, there we go. Now we have what pretty much looks like a wireframe for what this may look like. See if there's any areas along the rim here. Like for example, if you don't like this, you can always now use the brush tool and define another stroke like that. And it's going to consider your edit. Let's see, I think this should be fine. And you can always dip this number even lower to get, you know what, let's actually do it. Let's see if we can dip it lower. So I'm gonna resolve, resolve. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna be, let me just add another stroke here. Or actually delete that one, maybe that will, yeah, that's way better. Okay, so I'm happy with this. We're gonna click export mesh. We want pure quad mesh so that it tries, or maybe it guarantees, I'm not sure which. It's gonna make sure that every single polygon is a quad, which is what we want. It's a very nice geometry, uh, but you don't need this. Um, we're gonna bring up our smoothing to one and then extract. And then we get our wireframe, which is a bit denser than what was shown before, but that's because of the pure quad mesh. So anytime there's a triangle, it has to basically apply a subdivision and break that up. So that is the power of instant meshes. Very quick retopology. Uh, we can always go over this more, but this is fine. Save. And now instead of base high res, we have base low res dot obj. Okay, so I think we are done with instant meshes. That was retopology. Close that. And then I'm going to bring this back to full screen and then save, and then we can import, which by the way, there's a command for this, spacebar, import obj, pretty cool, import our low res, okay? It's gonna take a moment, and then let's see. We can move this over to the side, and you can see indeed, this is a low resolution version. However, it looks very pixelated. So you might try to do shade smooth, but that does nothing. That's because when we go into edit mode, you're gonna see that every edge is considered a sharp edge, so we need to fix that. So first of all, let me move it back, undo until it goes back, but it didn't import now, so let's actually re-import it. Okay, import, okay, perfect. So we're gonna hide our high res, and for our low res, we're gonna go into edit mode, select all the edges, and then go to edge, and then clear sharp, perfect. And now when we go to shade smooth, which we might have already done, it's going to be smooth. So that is perfect. We have our low res and our high res. And we're going to be using Substance Painter to bake everything down. So what we're going to do, and by the way, these chocolate chips are not that high res. Like, yeah, they have a lot of polygons, but it's nothing insane compared to the cookie. So these are going to be both in our low res and our high res. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these chips, shift D for duplicate, right click to put them back to where they were. And we have chips one and chips two. So then what we're gonna do is we are going to combine them. So we're gonna take one of the chips and the high res and basically connect these. So I'm gonna hide these two. So our high res and our chips, and then we're gonna space bar join. So now we have our, I'm just gonna call this high res cookie. Okay, and then we can hide this and then combine these two. Spacebar, join, and this is going to be our low res cookie. And both of them should have the chips now. So if we move our high res cookie, yes, we see we have two versions, one of them with all this detail, one of them without it. Um, and yeah, both of them have the same chips. So this is good for baking, which is what we're going to be doing next. So let's just, let's just set it back. Okay. So before exporting for Substance Painter, what we're going to do is make sure our low res cookie is fully unwrapped. It doesn't matter if the high res cookie is unwrapped or not, since we're just using it for baking. We're going to hide the high res cookie and then just go to UV editing. And remember what we did is we did unwrap each of these. As you can see, you can see the seams we unwrapped each of these chocolate chips, so all we have to deal with is the cookie. Now, if we are lucky, and we, we'll see if we are, depending on our retopology, we'll just be able to select a loop here that goes around. Let's see, does that go around perfectly? I think it does. 
Okay, perfect. So we're going to be using this as a seam. So spacebar, mark seam. And then, yes, yeah, so each of these chips is going to be unwrapped. And then for this cookie, we're going to have a top segment and a bottom segment. We don't need to get too complicated with this unwrap. So we're going to click L to just get this cookie, and then U, unwrap. And it's just going to take a second, and then you see we have our top and bottom islands. So then if we select everything, um, all these chocolate chips are basically overlaid on the same island, but they're actually separate. So to actually get this ready, what we need to do is two things. Go to UV, Average Island Scale. Oh, make sure you have everything selected. UV, Average Island Scale. And then you get this whole mess over here. Then UV, Pack Islands. There we go. And then to actually make sure we can see what we're doing, go to Display and set this to like Dash or something. Um, yeah, Dash should be fine. Okay, so now we have our cookie islands, and then the rest of these are chocolate chips. All of them are identical. And we want to make sure we're using our texture space appropriately. So we're going to set link on. I think what we're going to do is we're going to just select, whoops, we're just going to select using face selection. We're going to click L here and L here, move these down, then move these off to the side. So we're, we're going to start by making these islands optimized because, again, they're the majority of pretty much our texturing process. It's the majority of the model. We're going to rotate them like that. And then that's going to let us scale them up just a bit, but everything does help. So something like that. Move them over. I wonder, I bet we can optimize this even more. Let's bring that down. Scale. Something like 1.08. I think we can squeeze that in. Let's scale it down to 0.99. Like that. Okay, and let's make sure that everything is actually inside your UV space. That's looking good. And then we can actually just bring these chips back in. So I'm going to bring these chips. Make sure you have the whole island selected. We're going to bring these and put them down here. And we can rotate them so they fit by 90 degrees. And then we bring these. We're going to rotate them by 90 degrees and then move them up here. And then what we can do is, again, this isn't going to be perfectly um, average island scaled using Blender terminology. But we can just take these, scale them up by like 1.1, and then these by 1.1, just so we're using everything we have. Scale, 1.1. Okay, so that is now unwrapped. I'm liking the look of that. Layout. So now we have our model ready. So I'm going to click Save. We are going to take our low-res cookie. That's this one. We are going to click File, Export, and then FBX for Substance Painter. Um, you can do OBJ too, but this works best. And then I actually already exported these because I forgot to UV unwrap. But don't forget about um, don't forget about the UV unwrapping. I'm just going to overwrite these files. So selected objects only, and then export. And then we can hide this, enable this, file, export, FBX, and then high res cookie. Selected only. And this is probably going to take a bit longer since it has more geometry. Okay, there we go. So that is now done. And oh, by the way, we don't we didn't even have the high res cookie selected. Or no, I think we did. I think we should be fine. So I'm just gonna save and now we're gonna go into substance painter to texture. So now we're inside of Substance Painter and we need to texture our cookie. And this part is really hard to get right and make it look edible. So if you have a cookie dough material or texture, make sure that you use it. It's going to save you a lot of pain, but let's try to do it without that. So Substance Painter, go to File, New. I'm going to select our low resolution FBX we exported from Blender. And then for our document resolution, I'm going to keep it at 1024 by 1024 because our UV map was pretty solid. We used a lot of the texture space and honestly, we don't need anything higher than this, I don't think. So we're going to keep it. We're going to click OK. And that's loaded in. First thing we need to do is a high poly to low poly bake. So we're going to go to texture sets or actually let's delete this. Then texture set settings, bake mesh maps. You scroll down to get here. 
And then we're going to click this and we're going to add our high res cookie. And then notice that the button down here says bake default OBJ mesh maps. That's because we never actually uh, named a material in Blender. So it's just called default, but that's fine. We're going to click that and it is going to bake. So let's see. There we go. We see a lot of our cracks and details coming in. So we're saving ourselves a lot of headache by just doing this bake instead of using this high poly mesh. So there we go. That is looking great. So now on to texturing. Let's try our best. So go to layers. Let's bring this down and then this up. We're going to start with the chocolate chips. So first thing I'm going to do is add a fill. And then I'm going to call this chocolate chips. And what we want to do is get this to look like kind of shiny chocolate. So first of all, the color, you want to make this kind of a brown until it kind of looks right. And you play with this. That's kind of looking chocolatey. I like that. And then roughness, something like nothing crazy, maybe 0.4. So it's shiny, but not a mirror. You know, we can settle for 0.35. Okay. And of course, we only want our chocolate chips to be made of chocolate. So add a black mask. We're going to go to this tool right here. Change to object mode, select everything, and then change to zero, and then deselect this. Okay, so now we have the chocolate chips looking kind of like chocolate. Uh, we can add a bit of variation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate, control C, control V. And I'm going to call this chocolate chips black. And I'm just going to make these um, chocolate chips look a bit darker. So I'm going to drop this just a little. And then we're going to clear our mask. And then we're, we are going to reselect only some of the chocolate chips. So I want this one to look a bit darker. This one, this one, that one, and that one. And now we have a bit of variation. You can see some of them are darker. In fact, they actually look a bit too dark. So we're going to bring that up just a bit. Okay. So now we have our variation, but it's not, eh, you know what? I'm going to bring it up even more. We want to do this correctly. Just a bit darker. Okay. I think that's passable right there. And now we want to do our cookie dough, which is the hard part. So I'm going to put this inside a folder, which I'm going to call chocolate chips. Select our two solids and bring them in. Okay, so now we are going to make another folder, which is going to be our cookie dough. And first thing we want to do is set a black mask on this folder. And then just select our cookie and nothing else. So anything we put inside this folder is only going to affect the cookie, not the chips. Okay, so I'm going to add a fill, put it inside of here, and then let's try to get that cookie dough look. So it's kind of like an orangish yellow color. So we play around with this until it's kind of looking like a just the beginning of a cookie. This is gonna, <laughs> This is going to be impossible. I think that's an okay start right there. Bring your roughness up to like 0.7 or something. The dough is not that reflective. Okay, so that is already looking okay. Um, I'm going to add some detail to this. So in our height, I'm going to add a height map. So for that, I'm going to go to procedurals and then add, let's do B and W spots one or two. Two looks better. Add that in. So that is no longer looking like a cookie, more like a, a Mars landscape. So to fix this, what we're going to do is go to height and dip this considerably. And then second thing to do is probably add a blur. So add filter blur. Make that a bit more subtle, like 0.25. So this is it. Let me zoom in. Uh, without, with, very subtle. And that's giving our cookie a bit of texture that I like. We can bring this height down to like 12. Okay, so that's a good start. What we're going to do is we are going to duplicate this. Or actually, let's call this base. We are going to duplicate this. In that, we're going to remove the height. And here, we're going to add some color variation and also remove the blur. So I can bring height back to 100 here. So we're going to add some variation. So to add variation, I'm going to make these parts, we can either make them darker or lighter. Let's see. 
I'm going to go for this, maybe more saturated. Okay, so I'm going to add a black mask. And then here I'm going to use one of our smart masks down here. And I'm going to use something like Dust Stained. We can try out a bunch of these. And that's very subtle. You can barely tell the difference. But it is there. Um, I'm not going to use Dust Stained then. I'm going to use something more like Dirt. So let's try Dirt. And that is also very subtle. Okay, let's change the color just a bit to make it darker. Like that. Okay, so that's without and that's with. So that's adding a good bit of realism right there. Um, and I think that's good. We'll keep that as is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go along the rim and maybe along the chocolate chips and make it a bit darker as if it got not burned, but like a bit more baked along those areas. So I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to clear our mask, and I'm going to make this color darker. Actually, let's remove our mask just so we can see what we're doing. Yes, so we're trying to get this nice dark color. Something like that. Okay, this would actually make a good chocolate cookie, but that's not what we're doing. So we're going to re-add a black mask, and this time we're just going to paint it on. So we're going to go to brushes and add... This one right here, Artistic Heavy. And we can just draw it like this along the rim. So that's what we're going to do. Just draw along here. Not going to be too accurate since we're going to blur it anyways. Keep going along here. And we can actually use some of our shift clicking to make this a bit faster. But since this object is so curvy, I'm not sure if it's going to help. Shift click, shift click. Like that. Keep going around. Okay, I'm liking the look of that. And don't worry, it's not going to look this hideous. We're going to fix this. So in some areas, we're going to have this creep into the cookie a bit more. Maybe not that much, but just a bit more. Here we want it creeping in. Maybe around here. Not that much. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're also going to add more of this around the chocolate chips. So something like that. Or let's turn down the opacity here. And we're just going to border these chocolate chips. And again, we're going to blur this. Don't spend too much time on it. Just to get some nice darker areas. So it looks kind of more melted and cooked. Or not cooked. I guess you bake them in that area. Good thing we don't have like 50 chocolate chips or else everything uh, would take forever. Especially that sculpting part from before. Okay, almost done. Just add all that. All these details will help to sell the effect. And we're also going to be using some uh, subsurface scattering in the end for rendering. And that's really going to help. Okay, so that's looking good. And now what we want to do is we want to take our mask and filter. Blur it. Lots of blurs. And bring that up a lot. Like that, maybe. Like this. Okay, perfect. And now we make this way less intense. Base color, dip it. I said dip it. There we go. And you want to make this so you can see it, but not so it's so sharp. Maybe 45. Yeah, that's adding a good bit of realism here. I think we can actually increase our blur for our mask a bit more. So it just blends in more. And now we can add more base color, maybe like 52. Something like that. Okay, so this is without and this is with. And all these layers are just going to kind of contribute. So for this um, rim area like this, which I'm going to name, I'm going to call it a uh, black border. And here I'm going to call it saturated. For this black boulder, why, why did I say boulder? For this black border, what we're going to do is we're going to add some extra height. So wherever there's this rim or around the chocolate chips, we're going to get some extra detail. So for height, I'm going to use the same thing. So procedurals. And then we're going to add B&W spots to our favorite. There we go. So you see it's only applying to these areas, and we're going to make it pretty subtle. So height, and then just bring that down. Maybe like 
seven. And that's really gonna help sell the effect of some areas being more baked than others. So before, after, that's looking really good. Okay, so now we're starting to get somewhere. It's starting to look more cookie-like. I think one thing we can do is take these main chocolates and darken them a little. They're looking a bit too like milk chocolatey. So I'm gonna take our first chocolate chips and just darken it. Maybe bring this down to 07. Maybe further. We still wanna have some of that variation. Okay, so that's way better. Um, next, what I'm gonna do is this is not for like physical accurateness or anything, but I'm gonna use our ambient occlusion map. So I'm going to, right here, I'm gonna add ambient occlusion. So I'm gonna to go to project, and then in base color here, ambient occlusion. Okay, so we're gonna get that. Oh, by the way, we didn't even save. So control S for save. That could have been disastrous. We're gonna call this chocolate chip uh, textures. Okay, so we have our ambient occlusion here. We wanna get rid of, I think, everything except color. So let's just get rid of those. So now we only have color. So you can see that. And then we're gonna set the blending mode in base color. We're gonna set it to multiply like that. So here's, here's what it looks like. This is just adding kind of the shadows in the right area. Again, this is not for physical correctness or anything, just for a bit of detail. We're gonna bring that down just so it's a bit more subtle. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, next what we're gonna do is this is gonna seem real weird. I'm gonna call this AO. This is gonna seem really weird, but I'm gonna go to all and I'm gonna type in dirt. And we're just gonna put dirt all over this cookie. I know what you're thinking. Like, what are you doing? But I'm telling you, this will help. So what we're gonna do is open up this dirt and then we're gonna remove this gradient so we can actually pick a color. I think we can remove this grain or maybe make it less intense. That's not doing anything. Let's just get rid of it. Um, now what we can do is we can actually pick the color for this dirt by disabling this and then we can just pick it so it looks like, you know, one of a cookie dough color. So like, maybe bring that down. This is looking awful, but don't worry, we will salvage it. Okay, desaturated, lighter. Okay, maybe darker, something like this. And now let's actually make it look not horrible. So we're gonna go to our mask and maybe bring up the, once this opens, bring up the global balance, so, or maybe down. Just play with this until it covers the right amount of the cookie. And that's also the underside here. We are going to add another blur. Make that a bit softer. And then what we need to do is take our base color and bring it down a lot. Just so we can barely see it. And then we want to also bring down some other things like the roughness, it's affecting the chocolate shininess a lot. We only want that a tiny bit. And then our height, you can play with. Maybe bring it down most of the way. Okay, so this is a before and after. It's just adding, honestly, it's just adding a bit of variation to the shine of these uh, chocolate chips. So that's uh, before, after, Maybe bring up the height a little. Maybe not that much. Again, not an exact science. So now we are starting to get into something that looks much more like a cookie than what it did before. Um, let's take this black border and remove some base color. Again, we're just gonna keep tweaking this till it looks right. Maybe 40. Okay, let's see. What else would we want here? We can pick some areas of the cookie to make either lighter or darker. So we can just close up chocolate chips. In cookie dough, we can just copy, or we can just make a new one. Uh, make some roughness go up to like 0.88. So something higher than what it was before. And disable height, uh, metal, opacity, and normal. So we just have color and roughness. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is make some of this brighter, I guess, is what we'll do. 
So something like this, and then add a black mask, and then we're just going to paint using a brush. Using a brush, something like, I don't know, I don't think it really matters. This brush is fine, make that a lot bigger. We're just going to pick some areas of this cookie, I'm going to go for soft actually. Some areas of this cookie to make lighter. As if it was kind of cooked unevenly, which is kind of the, it's kind of realistic. Not everything's cooked perfectly. Maybe some along here, tiny bits along here. And then we're just going to always, as always, add a filter, blur, bring that up. And then take our base color, our base color, bring that down. Okay, so let's see a before and after. Yeah, that's adding a good bit of variation. Now, what would I do as a final touch? What would I do as a final touch? I would make the chocolate be not as smooth. So I'm going to go into our chocolate chips, and we'll do this for each one. We'll start off with the base. We're going to go to height, and let's add some procedurals and then I don't know we can use something different we can use uh, blue noise I guess bring that into height yes and let's see if we can scale it down I think our resolution is not high enough for that okay something like this then take our height and bring that down a lot just so it looks a bit more melted and uneven maybe something like eight see that from further away yeah, I like that. And then we can do a similar thing over here. Maybe these ones can be less melted, which is why they're darker or something like that. I'm not sure. So we'll go to height, add some uh, blue noise, bring the scale up to two. And then, yes, and then go to height and make this a little less intense. So something like four. And that's just going to make the variation a bit more apparent, which is what we want. And then I think I'm just going to do one more thing. So the same way that we made some parts of this cookie lighter just now, we're going to do the same thing, but the opposite. So I'm going to call this lighter. Uh, let's actually save Control S. We're going to duplicate this, call this darker, and then just kind of do the opposite. So we just go to our base color and bring this down. And then we're just going to clear our mask. And then just redraw some areas. Let's bring up the base color so we can see what we're doing. Yes. So let's make some parts of this cookie darker. Variation is always good, I believe. Just some random areas. Doesn't really matter. And of course, you can always add more detail to the bottom of your cookie. We're mainly focusing on the top. We can always add just a bit of detail down here, just so it's not fully left out. Okay, add a bit more. Perfect. And now let's take our base color and bring it back down to something like 20. So before, after. Okay, so I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. Again, to sell this effect, we're going to do it in rendering with some subsurface scattering and all this. But that's looking pretty good. So last thing we need to do is fix the seam, or at least try to fix the seam. You see it's not looking perfect. So to do this, add a layer, set base color, this blending mode to pass through, and same for pretty much everything. Height, pass through, roughness, pass through, metallic, everything should be at zero metallic, so we can skip that. Opacity, same thing, except everything's at one. Normal, pass through. And now we can go to our clone, and let's see, should that work? Yep, that is working. So V to uh, select an area, and then just shift click to kind of fix that area. We can, let's bring down our opacity just a bit so it's not a full rewrite. And we're just gonna go along our seam here, and this should pretty much correct everything. The main reason we even see this seam is because of the height. The color should not be causing any issues, I don't think. Just fix the seam. And you always want to move around your light just to see, because that's how you actually see the seam. So it's not apparent in all the areas. Here it's a bit apparent.
And the less you see the seams, the better. Generally, you don't need them to be perfect. It's more so that you don't want them to be horrible. So it's not a matter of perfection, really. Plus, this seems actually pretty well hidden in general, especially now. Okay, so we're almost all the way around our cookie, I hope. I think we did a pretty good job of getting this cookie dough gingerbread type look. Getting it in a substance painter. Okay, I think we've now gone around. Okay, so let's see our fix. So bef uh, before and after. So that really hides the seam. We will call this fix. And that is a chocolate chip cookie. We did it. Awesome. So once you are happy with this, I think I'm happy with this. If you want to do a final edit, you can always add a layer, base color, pass through, add a levels. Or no, maybe add a filter and a hue, saturation, lightness. And then you can just affect the color of this entire thing. Just kind of like a final color correction. So let's see, do we want this, this, less, more? No, I think that's fine. What about hue? No, that's fine. Lightness, I think we can afford to actually bring up a little. And before, after, you know what, whatever. We're just going to get rid of it. This is just something you can do. So I'm going to save, and then we're going to export. So file, export textures. Let's pick a place. We are going to go to chocolate chip cookie, add a texture folder. We're going to call this textures and we're gonna save inside here. PNG, 8 bits fine, 1024 by 1024. Dilation plus diffusion. This basically says at the edge of your UV islands, um, what do you want to happen? Do you want some interpolation or whatever? We're just gonna pick this setting right here. PBR metal rough, and then configuration. We go to PBR metal rough or whatever you picked. Uh, we do not need emissive, it's not glowing. Uh, we don't need height, it's gonna be on in our normal information. Speaking of normal, uh, Blender uses OpenGL, so bring that in here. Okay, so now let's just rename these again. It was called Default Material since we didn't name it. So we're just going to call it Chocolate Chip Cookie, CCC. I didn't even realize. This is the Triple C Tutorial. Okay, so now we've renamed all of these. Uh, you can add your ambient occlusion, although we're not going to be using it since we're using cycles, which is supposed to be physically accurate. So we don't need it. Um, okay, so then just click export. Okay, so we have exported and now let's actually set up our render. So I'm gonna open up our Blender file. You know, it'd probably be faster to just open Blender and then just go to recent. Okay, so we are in Blender. We will soon be in Blender. Okay, perfect. Uh, file, open recent, chocolate chip cookie, it's going to take a second, and there we go. So now we can actually, I'm going to save, I'm going to close. Okay, so back in Blender, full screen. Okay, now that we are back in Blender, let's apply our textures. So here's what we're going to do. Our high-res cookie, this thing, can go away. So X, delete. We're only using our low-res cookie. So what we're going to do is we are, first of all, going to go here. We're going to go to Cycles. Go to GPU for, at least in my laptop, makes everything faster. Okay, now we're going to go to shading, and this is where we start putting in our textures. So we're going to go to rendered view, and then a place to start is to change this environment. So go to world, close this, shift A, texture, environment texture, we're just going to add in HDRI. I'll put a download link in the, in the description for where to get free ones open and then I should have some on my desktop I will pick this one right here okay so now we have our HDRI perfect and now we go to object and let's just plug in our textures textures into this principled BSDF by the way here's our default OBJ let's rename it into CCC chocolate chip cookie okay perfect so to make this realistic, you want to change this to multi-scatter, this to random walk, especially since we're going to be doing some subsurface uh, scattering. So shift A, texture, and then, and then image texture. Plug that into base color. We're going to put our base color in here. Chocolate chip cookie, textures, add our base color. 
Okay, so there's our color. So, so far not looking too hot, but let's see what we can get. Shift A, texture, image texture. Let's go with uh, metallic. Open that up. Textures, metallic. Set this to non-color data, because again, this image isn't supposed to be color. It's supposed to be information between zero and one. So non-color data. Same idea with roughness. Oh, by the way, let's actually do this. Let's go to film transparency just to hide that. Shift A, texture, image texture, add this into roughness. There we go. And now where we should get uh, a better look or starting to get better is with our normal map. So Shift A, texture, uh, image texture. We're gonna add our normal. Normal is also set to non-color data. Did I do that for roughness? I did not. Non-color data, don't let me forget. Okay, so non-color data. This is a color output, but we want a vector input. So Shift A, uh, vector, normal map. This is a conversion. Plug this in here. This will turn it into a normal map vector. There we go. Now we're starting to get that detail we want. And you can set the strength. You don't want to go above one because then the seams become crazy, I believe. Yeah, so we're just going to stay below one. Okay, that's good. Sheen tint, we don't need any. IOR should be around 1.5, which means specular should be around 0.5. And then I think that's good. Only other thing we want is some subsurface scattering. But let's wait on that for a moment. So we're going to save. Now subsurface scattering takes a while. So before we do that, let's actually set up a camera. Okay, pick an angle. I kind of like this angle for our cookie, just to show it off. Okay, perfect. Shift A, um, add a camera. And then the shortcut for moving the camera to your view, I think is Control Alt Number Pad Zero. There we go. So again, that's number pad zero, not zero at the top of your keyboard. Um, and then we're gonna click N, and that's gonna give us all these properties. We're gonna lock camera to view so we can actually move the camera with us. We're gonna go to output, change this into a square. I think a thousand by a thousand should be good. Okay, now we can recenter this. And then let's go to camera. I'm gonna change this to 65. I like it real close. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, now let's unhinge this. Um, we can add some depth depth of field, but I don't think that's very important right now. We're gonna save again. Okay, so now let's go into our subsurface scattering, which is gonna add a lot of render time, but it's gonna look very good. Because cookies have some light passing through them. Not a lot, but just a bit. So select your object we are going to make a subsurface color of, um, I don't know, something like red or orange, whatever the cookie would emit when light passes through it. And then let's see. So if we go to one, that's going to be insane. Yes. So let's go to 0.1 maybe. I think that's probably too high. Subsurface is best done very lightly. So maybe 0.05 and then make this a bit more red. We can always experiment with this. Let's go to our camera view. Now it's going to be really hard to tell what this is going to be looking like. I guess we can always use Eevee, but we need to do a full render. So let's, let's actually just play with this a bit more. I'm thinking 0.1. That's probably a bit too high. I'm going to settle on 0.075. Okay, so I'm going to click save, and now let's do some color management. Um, I'm going to take, the, this HDRI has a lot of contrast, so I'm going to take this look and bring it down to maybe um, medium low, something like that. Let's see, what does low look like? Nah, let's stick with medium low, and then for our exposure, play with that until it looks like the perfectly exposed cookie. So let's see, this is zero, we want to make it a bit brighter, so maybe 0.2. Okay, that's looking good. And then, yeah, I think we'll skip out on depth of field. So I'm just going to save again, getting a bit crazy with these saves. 
And this material should be fine. We don't need to mess with it much more. We're going to go to layout and let's try to do a final render. So make sure our settings are good. Output, we want 1000 by 1000. PNG, no compression. I'm getting some crazy lag. Let's go back to solid mode. Shading, cavity, just to see what we're looking at. Okay, so that is looking good. And let's do something like 400 samples. Should probably be plenty. Okay, this is transparent. We don't have hair. And then light paths. We can always, I don't, I don't really know how high quality we need here. This is probably overkill. But we'll do something like this. And then I'm just going to hit render with F12 and see what we get. So I'm going to hit render and probably fast forward do this. And there we have our chocolate chip cookie final render. Of course, there's a lot of work to do to get this to photorealism. Uh, some things that come to mind is you can make the chocolate look a bit more chocolatey. Uh, the subsurf probably looks a bit weird around this um, where these two objects intersect. So there's a lot of things to fix. You can pick a better HDRI and all this, but this is a great place to start if you're trying to make a chocolate chip cookie. So hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial. We went over a lot of techniques. Uh, you can download this 3D model. I'm going to post it on my website, cgmatter.com. It's free, comes with textures and all this. So just get it for free if you don't want to make it yourself and just want this file. And then, yeah, you've made it to the end of the tutorial. At this point, I'm just going to just quickly self-promote a little. Um, if you enjoyed this and want to support what I do, I have a Patreon. That's where you can donate. There are some benefits that have to do with getting free materials and all this, but that's only if you want to support me. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching.